Parisa Lack. Uh, she's part of the Data Science Lab in Ryerson University, and um, she's going to talk about a, a project that is uh, kind of an interesting, interesting funded project that they, a group of them did on, uh, on digital billboard uh, design. And um, with that, I'll turn over to Parisa. And Parisa, we have about 20 minutes, and then I'll let you know when it's uh, time for Q&A. So good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, basically, as uh, Osborne said, my name is Parisa. I'm a part of Data Science Laboratory in Ryerson University. I'm doing my PhD here. And um, this was basically a, an engaged project between our lab and a company that was a startup company that owns uh, several digital billboards. And they were looking for a revenue management uh, strategy um, that, that, were, uh, that they could manage like the revenue and uh, fulfill all the capacity of the digital billboard as well as making more money um, um, compared to the competitor. So basically right now, uh, in digital billboard, uh, digital billboard uh, are everywhere. It's not only in Dundas, this is by the way, uh, Dundas uh, Square in um, Toronto. So it's not mainly in Danda Square or Times Square. Uh, it's basically in every corner of every street. And um, you can see it like everywhere. And compared to the um, traditional billboards that took like several uh, hours to just like put up, and they would stay there for several months or several, several days, and then it would take a couple of uh, hours to tear down, uh, these digital billboards uh, give the opportunity for the advertisement to change every second. So basically, uh, you can have a different kind of advertisement at the same time for several days going on uh, throughout this digital billboard. Um, so basically, the, the business model, although pretty much similar, both are advertising, both are billboards, um, should be slightly different because uh, what's the, the service that we're offering is, is going to be sort of uh, different uh, than the traditional one. So these are some of the differences between these two business models. So basically, the pricing strategy for the, the traditional billboards were static. So we had one single price for the whole billboard for like um, a, a package of a day or uh, a, a month or so. Uh, whereas in the digital billboards, we have certain kind of spots available, and those are the things that we're selling. And uh, so the cost customer demand is sort of different as well. The customer demand for that one, the traditional one, was basically they bought the whole billboard for uh, several uh, days, and then uh, for this one, they're buying like only certain kind of spots. And then there are certain spots that are not very um, popular. So imagine now we have a billboard in a financial district, and the, during the day, it's, uh, the demand is going to be so high, but like um, uh, during the night, or whether the, the billboard is located in like a, um, um, a very small LA, uh, the demand is going to be lower. So the pricing strategy for this one should be different, right? So it's, it's not like, again, the whole thing that you're selling and the whole impression that you're getting for, uh, for that billboard. So the number of impression is different. The number of impression is basically uh, what you sell, what you, um, the amount of times that people are seeing your advertisement. And that's basically a measure that um, the advertisement provider companies are selling, basically. Uh, so the provided impression for the digital billboards are sort of different for special time frames. Again, as, a, as I uh, mentioned the example, imagine in a financial district, during the day should have a lot more uh, impressions than during the night. The capacity management comes into the place as well. Again, in the traditional ones, we were selling the whole thing, and we were sure that we are having that uh, um, revenue for that uh, billboard for, the, for that amount of time. However, for the digital billboards, the capacity is, again, um, people are, uh, might, might get the, uh, the uh, spots during the day, but they, they might not be interested um, during the night. So these are a the, uh, couple of different uh, um, differences between these two, stra uh, these two um, uh, business models. And um, so basically, as I said, the digital billboard industry right now, uh, the problem that they have was that they were uh, following the, the static pricing strategy for Eggman, which was the, kit, the exact same thing that people, <laughs> what should I do?
Sorry for the interruption. So, um, as I said, digital billboard industries are right now are following the static pricing for all the spots in all the billboards in the same market area. By market area, I, I mean um, like uh, if you have all the billboards located in Montreal, they're going to have the exact same price no matter um, what the characteristics are um, uh, of the uh, billboard or uh, that single spot uh, has. Mm -hmm. uh, although these informations are available, they, they still uh, follow the static pricing strategy. Uh, and also the capacity management is, is not, um, the capacity is not so manageable because of the fluctuations in the demand of certain kind of spots. And um, yeah, so uh, some popular um, spots are having like several demands, whereas uh, some of them are going to remain empty for the whole um, for the whole uh, time duration. Um, so our proposed solution for this company was to follow a dynamic pricing because like everything is changing, the demand is changing, the price should change because of um, all the characteristics of the billboard. So we suggest that they follow the, uh, the dynamic pricing strategy, which is exactly the same case for the Expedia. Uh, the Expedia was proposing this strategy uh, before for the ho uh, hotel and travel industry. Um, and that is basically, uh, the analogy behind it is that the, the same product and service uh, will have different pricing according to uh, their offered time and according to the demand. So basically, in comparison, uh, when you have a static pricing, you have only one single price point, point for every, uh, for all other, uh, for all uh, demand coming to the market. So you are making only that yellow part revenue. Whereas in static pricing, as the demand changes, the price is changing. So the revenue that you're making is sort of cumulative of all those revenue that you can make um, while you're adjusting your price. So the question became, uh, what kind of data can we use in order to uh, uh, sort of set that dynamic pricing? So basically, where can we get our data uh, to just like um, um, uh, define that dynamic pricing? Um, where can we extract <coughs> that data? And uh, how should we design this dynamic pricing strategy for this specific industry? So as I said, this is sort of similar to hotel and travel industries, but it's slightly different. It's, it's basically advertisement. And uh, this is sort of more similar into the, dig um, the uh, electronic advertisement, online advertisement, um, than uh, when you're looking into the bill billboard advertisement. So basically, these are the questions that should be answered uh, to just come up with an idea of how um, to define the dynamic pricing strategy for this industry. So the study that we did uh, uh, was uh, following these steps. At the beginning, we gathered some data and then we did some exploratory analysis on that data. Then we designed the dynamic pricing strategy for that. And then um, while we were uh, designing that um, 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 dynamic pricing strategy, we were evaluating all different features that we can get from um, online resources. And then um, there were certain values that we had to give to those features. And then we, uh, we tested all those uh, analogies with the simulation. So the simulation was following a random demand. with the simulation and we were using random <coughs> demand because we didn't have that um, uh, the demand um, of data so we, we ran it on a simulation sort of and then we got the results which is sort of a proof of concept of that um, of that uh, this strategy is actually working and making more profit for the company so what we got was that we get we got a sample data uh, from one of the big threes in this industry which is uh, uh, Lamar website so we got, uh, we uh, sort of um, restricted our data gathering to four different regions, which was on Atlanta area, the Nashville area, and the area in between. Um, so what we got was, a um, from, from that, uh, we were able to uh, gather the panel ID, which was a unique code for uh, single um, billboards. 
their location and the line, latitude, uh, latitude longitude uh, for, for that billboard. The number of impression for the whole billboard, which was the only thing that we could uh, gather from that. But for specific spots, uh, if we gather some data from traffic, we are able to just uh, sort of come up with an idea of um, uh, making this impression to be specific to every single spot. We were gathering the price, uh, and that's the price that we're going to use um, in our analysis. Uh, we gathered the total number of spots available for each billboard, and the available spots per day for each billboard. So these were the, the data that we gathered through that website. And then, uh, while we performed the exploratory analysis, this uh, analysis confirmed that they are uh, um, using a, um, a, a static pricing strategy, and it's only dependent on the location of the billboard. Um, and they're not um, using any other sort of information um, that, um, that they had. And for instance, they were not using impression, which is a very uh, important factor in an ad advertisement providing. So basically, Impression is a, is a term that they use for advertising, so how much you are, uh, you are seeing. So basically, um, let me tell you an online um, um, advertisement. How much you're watching this, uh, this page. So basically, wherever you're going to that page, whenever your URL in that, is in that page, right. that's going to be counted as one impression. Right. How do they do it with, with the billboard? Though? For the billboard, they're, they're uh, calculating like the amount of people that are passing through that area. So that's number of exposures. So that's your CPM that you have on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So cost per thousand exposures. Exactly. So. And then on that uh, on that uh, <coughs> graph, I'm going to talk about the cost per impression, yeah. which is basically um, wh while they're selling the advertisement, uh, they're giving you this cost per impression um, price. So they're saying like the CPM for this billboard is yeah. that much. So in that context, impression really means exposure. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. So basically, um, this is a graph that shows that, for instance, in Atlanta area, you have different fluctuations in, in this uh, CPM, and the price is static, as, as you see over here. So um, and even the price was not dependent on, on the price of the billboard. So if, imagine that we had a small billboard and we had a very large billboard. The exact same pricing was used for, for all those uh, uh, billboards. Um, so, um, our dynamic pricing um, um, strategy was followed uh, and, uh, and was inspired basically by a dynamic pricing um, strategy uh, proposed uh, for hotel industry by uh, Bayomi and his colleague in 2013. So basically what they were, they were saying was that they, uh, for the dynamic pricing should be equal to a product of a reference price multiplying some control variable. So basically, the reference price is, is uh, a, um, a, uh, a price that is coming as a, a base price. And then the control variables are basically all those variables that define the characteristic of the billboard. And then uh, we can just somehow uh, multiply those characteristics into, uh, into the reference price in order to adjust the price for that specific, um, that specific spot. Uh, so yeah, we used that uh, uh, refer uh, uh, reference price as the price that we were gathering from Lamar website. And then for the control variables, um, all the variables that might affect the demand, and um, uh, uh, we use them as a multiplier. Um, so basically, uh, while we were looking into different kind of um, um, information that we could gather from the website to be used as multipliers in our analysis, uh, we found some um, some characteristics that are sort of uh, dependent on the demand, and uh, they, they could sort of be used uh, for adjusting the price. 
So each multiplier were adjusting the price either up or down. So there were either premiums or there were uh, discounts. And uh, that was basically around that price that we gathered from the Lamar website. So what we, uh, what we considered here was the size of the billboard, the number of impression, the remaining capacity of the uh, billboard, the time of the day, so uh, um, and, and what exactly time slot uh, are we looking into, the time until appearance, so basically if I'm uh, reserving this spot from now and I want, to, uh, I want my advertisement to be shown like in one month, then that would have a discount. But when I'm um, reserving a spot like two days before, I might have a different kind of uh, pricing. Uh, and the parameters, all those parameters were set around one. So uh, basically, um, if we wanted to increase the price, we would multiply it by 1.4, which was a rare case um, for our analysis. And then uh, which, uh, if we wanted to give discount, we would uh, multiply that price by 0 0.4. Um, and this was all um, set by the industry expert. So the, guy, the uh, company that we were uh, working with, uh, we um, gave them some surveys about all these different um, um, uh, features, and we were asking like, how are these? Uh, in, how important are these uh, for the price and demand on this market? And they were setting all these um, values in there. Uh, so basically, each multiplier was considered as being linear or piecewise linear. So this was for simplicity. And uh, by piecewise linear, as I said, like uh, if, if we're looking into the remaining days uh, to, to, to slot appearance, uh, we're gonna get, uh, give a 20% discount whenever it was 180 days to um, um, appearance of the um, uh, advertisement. Then this price would go up until uh, two, weeks from, um, two weeks to appearance. And then uh, and by that time, we would give again uh, some discount in order to fulfill the capacity. So this is basically a simple way to show the piecewise linear function that we use for, for these analysis. So again, at the description of the features uh, that we used was the impression, the size of the billboard, the appearance time. Uh, for the appearance time, we had the seasonal impact, the special e events, and all those stuff got, uh, considered. Uh, the time uh, from reservation until slot appearance, as I just um, showed you the um, uh, piecewise linear function for. The remaining capacity at the time of reservation and the number of slots um, um, reserved altogether. So this is basically the impact of the group size. So if you are uh, getting like the whole um, uh, billboard, you would get like some discount. discount okay. And there was another constraint that we added uh, to, to, to the whole system, which we called a global constraint. And then that's um, basically set as uh, we, we didn't want the price to be very off or very low. So that constraint was, was there in order to make sure that the price is within a um, logical or uh, um, uh, variation. Uh, so then we tested um, our analogy on, on with the simulation. So the input uh, for uh, that simulation was the characteristic of the advertisement spots and the characteristic of the billboard and actually the demand. The demand was a, uh, uh, following a Poisson distribution, so we just uh, generated a random demand for our analysis. And then, um, so yeah, it was there was no historical data for that, so we did that. And the output was a total revenue for 3,000 iteration, which is, uh, uh, which was generated through a, a MATLAB uh, program. So the result, uh, if I want to compare the static pricing strategy with the dynamic pricing strategy, uh, we have, um, so the 3,000 iteration, we were getting the data, we were calculating the price, we were recalculating the demand, and um, that's, that's what we got. So the static pricing, as you see, it's only four different um, uh, pricing for all the 3,000 iterations that we had. Whereas in dynamic pricing, you see the variation of the price. It, this is sort of the adjusted price. As we got like the demand, we were looking into the price, we were uh, looking into the characteristic of the um, billboard and we we're adjusting the price. And this is basically to show that, yeah, so that's a very specific price and this is a, a dynamic price which is adjustable. So uh, if you look into this graph, this is basically uh, what we got uh, in comparison again between the dynamic pricing and the static pricing. 
this part shows the static pricing. So we had, whenever we had the demand as being zero, we didn't generate any revenue. And we had a static pricing, so we, we just made that much revenue for, for that um, strategy. Whereas for the um, um, pr proposed uh, solution, uh, we had, whenever we had zero demand, we were adjusting the price, so we were giving some discounts, so we, we thought that uh, half of the time we were going to have some demand being generated because of the cost. So, um, and, and that, uh, whenever we had the, the, uh, the demand as being zero, we were making some money at least. And then uh, for the times that we had more demand, um, the prices were again adjusted, uh, and that's why we're making more revenue. So the cumulative revenue that we're making over there is way too higher than uh, the cumulative revenue that we have over here at the study. So the conclusion uh, was that, yeah, this was a proof of concept that showed that the dynamic pricing is basically um, making um, um, the, the revenue of the company being, uh, be better, it, and it fills out the MP capacity as we were adjusting the price. We're assuming that the, the, the uh, demand is sort of being changed, and uh, we were able to manage the high demand cap um, uh, capacities, uh, and that's why we're, we, we were able to increase the revenue. So the threats to the validity of this study is basically uh, um, from um, four different areas. So the, the external uh, threat to the validity is basically that we, we got a publicly available data set and we, are, we were only focusing on one single company. So basically the result might not be um, gener um, 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 generated to all, all um, um, yeah, generalizable to all the um, businesses in this industry. Um, the threats to the internal validity, we could say that this is very minimal because we are only using a common calculation of the revenue, which is basically price times uh, demand. For the construct validity, we followed a, a procedure which was sort of similar to the one that was used in hotel industry. So we believe that the, con the threats to the construct validity of our study is fulfilled. And for the statistical va uh, validity, uh, threats to the validity, we follow the Monte, Monte Carlo experiment, which is basically um, based on like the number of iterations that you do, and uh, you're generating some um, some numbers, um, um, you're gener obtaining numerical results out of those. And this method is uh, mainly used for problem classes such as optimizations, and uh, it's able to generate some numbers from any probability distribution. So basically, this probability distribution for demand that we, we consider it is going to be fulfilled because we did like um, um, 3,000 3, iterations um, uh, for our study, and uh, we got the cumulative and the, uh, the mean of uh, the um, revenue for that one. For the future direction, we're uh, we're trying to test our proposed strategy on a real time, uh, real life data. So basically, uh, we're gonna um, uh, try this, and we're gonna gather the demand data from this company. And um, we we would also like to um, gather some more information from like traffic data or weather or media uh, social media networks in order to add to those multipliers and make the um, the price of each single spot being more specific to that spot. And then uh, going forward, we're, um, we would like to uh, suggest a recommender system um, or uh, sort of propose a recommender system that, that uh, gives the uh, consumer uh, or suggests the consumer uh, the spot that might be of their interest and they can just select uh, those. And um, accordingly, we can adjust the price for those as well. And that's going to help them to fulfill the capacity even further. So thank you very much. <coughs> So the, the red bar on the left is yeah. when demand is zero? Yes. So are you saying that when demand would otherwise be zero, you're generating demand because you're adjusting the price? Yeah, I don't understand how you get revenue. Yeah, demand. yeah, okay. So basically uh, what we have is that the, the beginning demand is zero, right? Okay. Then uh, we're adjusting the price and we're assuming that uh, people are price sensitive, so half of the people are going to get um, are going to have like some demand according to the price that sure. is adjusted. Right? So they're actually capturing that extra area. Exactly. Exactly. How, how do you 
So where is cost in this process? All right, so basically the cost or the, uh, the no, price? Cost. So cost to the supplier. Uh-huh, right, so we don't consider that at this point, right? Yeah, 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 we don't consider that one. It's, it's a constant cost, yeah. so we don't consider that one. It's just the revenue. So the revenue is price times demand. Right. But at this stage, we don't know what the cost factors no. are, so we don't actually know no. if they're, it's a constant they're profitable cost, so or not. Yeah. It's just a revenue thing. Because it's about the big data, could you explain the size of the available data and how many samples have been collected? Yeah, so basically uh, what we had, it was um, it was only a handful of data that we gathered. But we were expecting to just like ga uh, gather some more because like if you want to get like a lot of different uh, areas covered, uh, then you would have different kind of pricing for different kind of areas. So that's why we focus on a very small amount of data right now for, for the purpose of this study. And it was around um, 150 um, digital billboards that we gathered. But we had a lot of different uh, data in it. So it was like a lot of different features that we gathered from that. Hi. What's your plan to take this work forward? Yeah, yeah, it was in the future direction. So basically, for now, the only thing that we are hoping for is that we're going to get some, some uh, real uh, data from demand so that we can see that this dynamic pricing is actually working. Because we are um, artificially generating the demand and we are artificially uh, thinking that, okay, so now that we're adjusting this price, this demand is going to be that much. So that's why we're hoping to get some more data regarding the demand. And then moving forward, we're going to add all those other variables. And then moving forward, we're going to do this recommender system for uh, suggesting um, like different kind of spots that might be of the interest of the users that are sort of uh, booking those spots. Have you considered as well the, the game theory? Uh, not that? yet, but that's a very interesting yeah. suggestion. Because you know what's happening is as you build this, mm -hmm. the buyers are also building that's correct. a game theory framework to get that's to the lowest price, right? That's correct, yeah. So you have this kind of spy versus spy situation. It's sort of basically exactly the same as Expedia. So yeah. in Expedia, they're they're following the uh, this game theory. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be interesting. Yeah, um, I'm still struggling with the number of impressions because that will probably be key for the companies advertising here. Yes, so it is. how are they going to measure that in the future and to prove that these billboard advertisements are really seen by the consumer? Mm -hmm. So basically the number of impressions for the billboards are going to be calculated by only one single company. So there is one single company saying that, okay, the number of impressions for this billboard is that much. They're getting some, uh, some data about the population and they, uh, the demographic population of that area. And they're going to be calculating different kind of stuff and it's sort of a comparison between different areas. So for the billboard, it's that. But for the online advertisement, whenever you're going to, the, to that URL, it's going to be considered as impression. So in high traffic areas, like that square would be a good example. Mm -hmm. You've got satellite <laughs> and other companies that are collecting data on basically. That's exactly what it is. Yes. I don't remember the name of the, the company, but uh, but it was one one single company that they got all the, the information from. Like in the Lamar website, they were getting that information about the impression from that specific website. So what are you meaning? So that you, the cell phones have the sort of traffic levels or the number of people yeah, in the cell? Yeah, basically their company, one of them is Sell It, which is based in Montreal, yeah. which, which collect that <coughs> data on cell phones without personalizing them. Yeah. That's what I like. They just say how many there are. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you for your